she would come in my house with a black eye it's three four o'clock in the morning or i'd have to come and pick her up because he just left her out somewhere i remember growing up and watching uh the cinderella story and i always thought that you know, that, that was indicative of what my life would be like. This prince, Prince Charming, would find me, would rescue me. And Cinderella's story doesn't always happen just that way, you know, that um, sometimes our life takes these intersections that um, shape us and good, bad, and indifferent, and um, we can take those instances and um, learn and grow for, from them. And this particular intersection in my life is about surviving domestic violence. You know, I don't think any young girl grows up and um, ever imagines being uh, beaten or um, being rendered powerless by an in a love relationship. Um, I think we believe and things are going to be good and that relationships will be good and that we'll have these magnificent lives. The first time I experienced domestic violence, I was 17 years old and I was pregnant with my first child. Um, he decided to punch me in my face and it knocked me to my knees. I moved here to Minnesota, um, just to change from Chicago. So eventually I met a guy. Uh, I don't remember the first time he hit me, but I do know that there were countless, countless beatings. That relationship lasted four years. There was nothing I could do or nothing I could say or promise or display to him that would um, cause him to stop being violent. Normally at night, I, I got punched um, for no apparent reason at all. Just, you know, just him reminding me that, you know, he's in control and, um, and reminding me that this is what he does to me and this is what he will do to me. You know, I, I never really understood how uh, someone could tell you that they love you and in the next instance be beating you um, down in the ground or down to the floor or um, hitting you with objects or, or kicking you or spitting on you or calling you names. And um, I always believed or wanted to believe that he would change, that, um, that he would someday become that Prince Charming that one in that Cinderella story, and it never happened. And I think it was during that whole cycle of that honeymoon period where they could be so charming that, um, you know, it just reeled you back in. Eventually the honeymoon would be over and we would be right back to that whole chaotic lifestyle of the beatings, the, And I jumped in the square in the middle of my bed and I drew back the skillet and I said, this is enough. This is it. I cannot allow you to hit me again. And um, either you're going to kill me or I'm going to kill you. Someone called the police. The police came and um, I went to the battle women's shelter. And I stayed there 30 days. And by the time I came home, he was gone. And I've, I've heard it said, um, out of the frying pan and into the fire. And um, got into another relationship. And that relationship was equally, if not more, abusive. The violence became such a regular occurrence that when there wasn't violence, 
Um, I sometimes didn't know how to feel or how to be. And that became normal to me. That relationship lasted off and on 10 years. And I think that relationship was the time that I probably realized that I came closest to death. He choked me until I passed out. Um, and I remember waking up with my sister standing over me, asking me, why am I lying on the floor? And, and he wasn't there. You know, I think it's important to uh, break the silence or to, to, um, to tell our stories of survival uh, because so many other women and children did not survive. I, Janae and I, my best friend and I, the one who lost her life at the hands of her abuser, she and I talked a lot and it kind of put a strain on our relationship. But I remember the very last conversation that I had with Janae, I was actually angry at her. Um, she and I had went out the night prior and her accuser actually fired a weapon at me. So the next night um, she went out, she called me and she said, do you want to go out with me? <laughs> and my words were her too. Were, are you crazy? No. That was the last thing I said to her. That was the last thing I said to her. And a few hours later, I got a phone call telling me that she had been shot. We are all responsible for breaking the silence and uh, for speaking out about the violence, whether it's our neighbor, whether it's our, our sons, our daughters uh, our, that are experiencing or even perpetrating violence. It took me some time to discover that I was not responsible for anybody else's decisions. I was not responsible for um, making or causing anyone to change. But but I was responsible for my children, my children that looked up to me and my children that deserved to have a healthy home life and a healthy mom and a healthy relationship and a safe environment to live in. How could I instill um, integrity and value in their lives when they were watching mine? being taken away from me on almost a daily basis. It took me quite some time to even be able to look in the mirror and look at my reflection because um, when I looked in the mirror, I saw all those things that my abusers told me that I was. And um, I had never seen oh, this beauty that this creature, this human being that God created that deserved to be loved and deserved to be cared for. And uh, for uh, the first time in um, years, I felt free. Um, I felt free to be me. I felt free to discover me. Um, I had not known or had any idea of who I was. Um, because for so many years in my life, I was something to someone else. In that healing process, and as I began um, to surrender my will to this power greater than myself, surrender it to God and surrender all that badness and all those bad words. And, and he gave me new words to uh, replace the old words, you know, and 
where I wasn't a bitch anymore and where I was the apple of God's eye and, and I wasn't stupid anymore, but you know, um, I was worth more than rubies and God had given me this garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness and I had never felt that type of love or abandon. My name is Denisa and I am a survivor of domestic violence. Yeah, we all need somebody that can look at us proudly. So I got love for your mommy because you never doubt me. Don't know where I'd be without you in my life. Oh, that's right. Constantly dodging the daily battles and catching strife. No one to teach me the fragile line between wrong and right. No one to tell me to get on my knees and pray at night. And when I get too big, she knock me to the perfect height. Then tell me get back up and get myself back in the fight. See them fears still showing, fears still showing. See them tears still flowing. DocU is supported in part by an award from the National Endowment for the Arts, Artworks, the McKnight Foundation, and SPNN.